I have to say, I feel like a rock star. This is amazing. Wow, so many wonderful humans out there. Not so uh, skeptical now, are we, about psychology? Love life and enjoy every moment. So, I'm here with a question. Is happiness a choice? Martin Seligman's familiar formula is happiness equals biological set point plus conditions of living plus voluntary actions or choices. He said happiness is made up of 50% set point, 10% conscious uh, conditions of living and 40% conscious actions or voluntary actions. So can you choose happiness in the face of your challenges? You know, remember, peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of all of those and still be calm in your heart. So how do we do it? Mapping the human genome was completed in 2003. Magnificent contribution, right? But alongside it, the technology, scientists wondered whether it was going to be a cure-all for disease and a cure-all for all unhappiness. Not that simple. Thanks to epigenetics, we now know that the nucleus with the DNA is not the brain of the cell. Rather, the membrane encasing the cell is the real boss. And this fluid that all the cells float in, right, into which flows the sea of our, you know, all of our, um, that slide just went far too quickly, I'm telling you, um, into which flows all of the information from our food and our emotions and everything. You know, it's that which actually informs the genetic expression. So we know now that perhaps our parents are passing their genes on to us. We also used to think that we reached our brain cell quota in early adulthood, and then it was just a decline down into old age and death. But now we know neurogenesis is possible. And with the right conditions, the right choices, you can actually grow new brain cells. It's pretty exciting times. At any time in your life, you can grow new brain cells, increase your grey matter. It's so exciting. You know, what if, you know, with the right conditions, you can actually have influence over this and over your own happiness? Because we know that you have a brain, but you are not your brain. What if you are not a helpless victim of your circumstances, your depression, your anxiety? You know, what if your brain can be rewired? And while there's a lot of work to be done, there's a lot of good people doing it, you know, there's a really, really exciting times for your beautiful brain. Because we know that we're on these looping pathways, right? The neural pathways that just repeat. Your button's pushed, you go back into repetitive patterns of behaviour and thinking. But you can voluntarily interrupt those patterns, reinforce positive thoughts and behaviours. You know, it's really exciting. And what are you putting on repeat? Because emotional volcanoes go off every day. We're responding and re we're reacting to things all day, every day. So what are you putting on repeat? Because when we find ourselves in those repetitive programs, we forget that we can respond. And you have way more control over your response than what you're probably giving yourself credit for. And the thing is, when you become aware of your reactions, then you can begin to choose your happiest response. Then you're in control. And remember, these cells are floating in a sea of chemistry. So what are your cells absorbing? Because we're exposed to these images every day that trigger the neural pathways for craving as the dopamine starts to flow out into the system. You know, happy bodies need happy food. You know, we need fruit, veggies, all the macronutrients, the great fats. That's what we need to have a happy body. Diabetes, cancer, heart disease, they're all out of control, right? So we have choice about what we put in there, and it's time we took control back from all those advertising companies, I reckon. And you know, loneliness. Loneliness is a problem. Depression is also in epidemic proportions. And we're social animals. And I think the Dalai Lama said it. We're social animals. We need our tribe. And loneliness is a burgeoning health, mental health problem for the whole of society's happiness. If you want to find happiness, if you want to choose it, find your tribe like-minded people with whom you feel connected, with whom you feel safe. Find those people and nourish those relationships. Because we live in a time where it's more than just about our own happiness. The bigger picture is that we are all living on the same planet, breathing the same air, 
you know, and swimming in the same water, drinking the same water. So you need to be careful what toxins you're putting into your environment because that's what's going into your cells. I'm going to read a little quote here from Leyland Melvin, wonderful astronaut. I don't know if you've seen his latest TV show. He said, we're genetically connected to this planet and to the best of our knowledge, Earth is unique in its ability to support life as we know it. He went on to say that the past decade of astronomy has shown we are one among billions of worlds in the Milky Way galaxy, but our tangled web of geology and ecology make this strange rock the only one in reach that's just right for humans. And we need to protect the health and happiness of our home. And it's much more than individual happiness at stake here. Your choices influence your friends, your families, your community, your environment. And the choices that you make today have an impact on future generations. So is happiness a choice? I reckon, some a bit, you know? And really, if you agree with me that happiness is a choice, then only one question remains. And that's up to you to use your voluntary actions. What will you choose? Thank you.